three very uh, thought-provoking talks uh, before me. And uh, I'm here to tell a little story about what is probably the most played LARP in Norway in recent years, the Outpost, with uh, more than 3,000 14-year-olds playing it. This was a LARP that was commissioned by the Humanist Association of Norway, who wanted something that could improve the education they run for humanistic conferments on ethics and philosophy. And how did this commission end up with a post-apocalyptic world of pandemics and nuclear radiation? We wanted to make something that was getting the teenagers into discussions on ethics without being preachy, without using bait and switch, or without proving a point by depriving them of sleep and food. We wanted to make something that was fun to play, and we wanted to make something that was possible to run sustainably from an economic point of view where we could pay everyone who worked for us. So we landed on making The Outpost, a six-hour LARP about survivors from a catastrophe. The background story, I will go through it quickly, and I want to remind you, this was made in 2018. A new <laughs> virus had broken out. No vaccine or cure is available people have started speculating maybe this virus was man-made. And some evidence pointed back to biological weapon labs. And then a few things as well that you have not experienced in real life. Speculations of the origins of this virus had escalated into war, and this war had escalated into nuclear war. So our lab is set to a safe house for the survivors called the Outpost. And to create play and activity, we relied on a very old LARP design principle of attaching each character to different squares. In this LARP, everyone had two, their unit and their workplace. The units are the complement groups, meaning that the members know each other already. Each unit is identified by a color, and we use units to create social tensions and stronger identities in this scenario. For example, some are the originals that founded this safe house, others have joined later as refugees. Some have connections to biological research, making them very useful uh, in terms of finding a cure, but also under suspicion for being behind the whole calamity. Some are rescue workers who have rescued themselves instead of others, and so forth. And to add to the atmosphere of the place, everyone wears the same grey protection suits uh, with ribbons indicating the colour of their unit, uh, and it's fantastic to see how this changes a 14-year-old. Once they start wearing this, it's, uh, the attention is just increasing incredibly. The other sphere was workplaces. Researchers, janitors, medics, info crew, and so on, each with different tasks and workplace culture. Some more focused on liberty, others more on safety, which sets the stage for lots of discussions uh, such as who are the coolest group, but also more important things such as is video surveillance a good idea in this safe house? And we played most of the labs in school buildings, so to bolster the alibi for the players, it's also really important to create surroundings that makes it look more interesting and less like a school. So for example, red foil on the windows to make the lighting different, I, I mean, for protection against radiation. <laughs> and back in 2018, seeing this for the teenagers was super exotic, was super cool. Wow, people with masks, people disinfecting their hands and using antibacterial gel. Oh, you, they have to be in quarantine and isolation, wow. Uh, but of course, the real point of their love was not really to quarrel over which group is coolest or, or these things. So the main story was as follows. In the safe house, there is a very limited supply of medicine to keep the virus in check. And while the supply dwindles, they fight against the clock to invent a vaccine that can make it safe for them to leave the bunker and start a new society. They are investigated in clues how to create a cure and mis 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 misinformation, such as maybe drinking chloroquine could help. And while the clock is ticking, they have to face some horrible ethical dilemmas. Dilemmas such as your friends are coming back from an expedition testing positive for a new variety of the virus. You don't know if the medicine will work on this variety, so if you let them in, you put everyone's life at risk. But if you leave them out, they will for sure die. And these dilemmas are very hard as they are. 
and I influence the chance of succeeding in finding the cure before they run out. But they also comes with the additional question for reflection afterwards. What kind of new society do we pave way for with the decisions we make on our way there? So while the characters provide alibi for different views on these horrible dilemmas, we also we did our best to create dilemmas where no solution is the right one, but every answer is both reasonable and horrible, just on different terms. The most important decisions, discussions are to take place uh, out of character a few days later. And this builds on the unfreeze, move, refreeze framework, which some of you might be familiar of. My colleague Magna Müller has given an excellent talk on that at Knutepunkt uh, before. But then in 2020, season three of the outpost came to a sudden halt after only two runs that year. Our fantasy seemed to have become reality. And the coronavirus, it was really terrifying for us all in the beginning. We didn't know where it came from. We didn't know how lethal it was. We didn't know how to handle it. Speculations were running wild. Bio arms labs in China, vaccines that were there to control the population. Even some people suggesting drinking chloroquine to keeping the virus in check. So while the, the design of the lab was suddenly very close to home. Also, the next labs were cancelled due to social distancing rules. And uh, we couldn't uh, re resume it before 2022, where we were once again allowed to run the events. But then the Humanist Society, they decided this was too close to home, and they asked us to change the story. And our solution was to keep the general framework, but modifying the story so that the atomic war came first and we replaced the virus with dangerous fungi that used radiation as nutrition. <laughs> and this was a lot of work, and now the wow factor of face masks was gone. Uh, but at least some things were easier than last time. For example, finding stock photos of scientists in lab was suddenly all over the internet. <laughs> But jokes aside, I have to admit we're a bit scared of, uh, once again, foreseeing actual events. Um, <laughs> Russia invaded Ukraine not long after we made a new version. Fortunately, the threats of uh, nuclear arms have so far been only threats, but the war was coming closer, and everything was becoming much more real, even for privileged Norwegian teens. And early in 2023, HBO released the popular TV series The Last of Us, making everyone aware of what kind of threats Fungi are posing to us. <laughs> we made the last two runs so far of the outpost in March this year, taking it to over 3,000 players in total. And uh, with the outpost, we created a confirmant LARP that had no oppressive systems, no fighting, no deprivation of sleep or water, and very limited competition between the players. The engine was uh, just role playing and subjects at hand that were meaningful and interesting for these teenagers to play. And after the LARP, we asked the players each time, could this have happened in the real world? And they almost unanimously answered yes. So those who played before 2020, they have been uh, proven right already, at least to some extent. And I pray the, the current player do not have the same uh, prophetic powers. But uh, don't read up too much on the fungi Candida Auris if you want to sleep well tonight. <laughs> Thank you.